Hello! This is some sort of tag video. I can't remember the name of it because apparently I didn't write it down. I know uh, it was created by Royal Reader and I was tagged by Jason's Weird Reads. There are 10 questions. Let's go in and start. I guess you'll know what the tag is from the title of the video. So question one, the zombie apocalypse, a book you would save when civilization ends. Hmm, I mean, can you have the collected works of Shakespeare is this? Because possibly that. Uh, or maybe like The Stand by Stephen King, just because it's about the world ending, but kind of it is a little bit hopeful. And it's long as well, so it gives me some decent reading material. Same with uh, The Complete Works of Shakespeare. Although with Shakespeare, the reason I pick that is because it's been said that every conceivable human emotion can be felt at some point in Shakespeare's plays. Question number two, The Vampire, a book you would stake through the heart. This would be uh, Stephen Fry's book on uh, poetry, and I can't remember what it's called because it was that bad. Oh, The Ode Less Travelled. And he just came across as very smarmy in it. Um, very like, um, he was very anti free form poetry and was like, no, you have to follow poetic form. And if you don't do that, it's not real poetry, which is the kind of poetry I read. And it just, oh, it was just not a good book. I actually set fire to it a little bit. Question three, The Haunted House, a book that still haunts you. Um, Oh, the one that's just sprung into mind was Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill because there's a scene with it. Basically in it, this aging rock star buys a haunted suit, uh, but there's a scene in it with the eyes. Oh God, that freaked me out. Question number four, the psychological thriller. A book with a twist you did not see coming. I don't really like I mean, I, I don't tend to like try and predict what's going to happen in a sense. So quite often, twist will get me because I wasn't trying to predict, oh, I bet this is going to happen, you know? Um, I mean, I'm just trying to think of books with twists, but actually a lot of them, like Gone Girl and stuff, you kind of do see them coming. Um, but if anyway, if anything, I think that's why they're successful. Yeah, in fact, let's go for the ending of Boys in Blue, which is the third novel in the Lightfold series, which is my series, purely because it was one of those where as I was writing it, I was drifting further and further away from my outline. So we get to the point at the end where I just had no idea what was going to happen. I just let the characters go ahead and do their thing and sort of reported back on it. Question number five, The Creepy Doll, a book that seems innocent but isn't. Well, I guess we're going to go with any Dr. Seuss books because as we all know, they've been cancelled. Um, I had a bunch of them on my eBay store and I got a message from eBay uh, basically saying that my account was at risk of being closed down because I was selling racist content in the form of Dr. Seuss books, which I'm like, oh, okay, because my understanding was that these books were no longer going to be published, which seems fair enough, right? But then if you're banning people from selling existing copies of it as well, then suddenly you are censoring the book, you know? Biggie! He attacked my leg and then he attacked the tripod. Bloody cat. Uh, so yeah, Dr. Seuss because you can get like, so I have sold copies of the original title of And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie which is Ten Little and then A Racial Slur and I've sold like four of those on eBay, they used to come, come up quite often in those job lots and people pay like 20 quid for them because there are racists out there who apparently collect them and I'm fine with taking their money, you know. But I just think it's a bit hypocritical that I couldn't sell a book that actually had a racist slur in its title. Uh, I could sell that, that was all fine, but as soon as like I have a 12 month old listing for a Dr. Seuss book, no, your account might get banned. Question number six, The Monster, a book you could barely tackle slash defeat, uh, Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Uh, this used to be my most hated book, I had to study it for university, and basically we had a different book each week, and that one I really struggled to get through by the end of that week. I have since reread it, and I like it a lot more though, so, you know, I like The Monster now. Question number seven, the comedy horror. A book with mixed genres that worked or didn't. Any Discworld book, uh, in particular, I guess I'm gonna go for Guards, Guards, as that's one of my favorites. It blends sort of murder mystery with comic fantasy, and comic fantasy in itself merges two genres. Cat's going batshit crazy, mate. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend that. Question number eight, the cliched teen horror. A book you found super cliched slash stereotypical. Uh, probably Cassandra Clare's books. I did read like, I read like the first four of the Mortal Instruments, I think. And I read one of the ones that was set in Victorian England, which wasn't very good. Actually, it was very similar to Soulless by Gail Carragher. I would say the Gail Carragher take on Victorian steampunky fancy England was better. But both of those kind of had the same problem where 
it didn't really feel as though the setting was there. Like, it, they might as well have been wherever, in like a magical Narnia or whatever, because they didn't spend any time in this 19th century London. But anyway, that's a little rant aside. Um, yeah. Yeah, those books. I mean, in particular because Jace, I remember in one of the Mortal Instruments books, he, I think he fell through two windows and one skylight in the same book. And I'm just reading it being like, what? What are you doing? Question number nine, The Demonic Possession. A book so gripping you needed an exorcist to escape it. Well, obviously this is like hyperbolic because I haven't used an exorcist to escape from a book. I mean, we could go for The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. That was pretty damn creepy. Um, yeah, it's one of those books where after reading it, I was like hearing things and stuff, crazy. Question number 10, the science fiction, a precious book you would permanently sacrifice to aliens for the good of mankind. I mean, I guess, right, what came to mind is the or On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Give that to the aliens, they'll understand evolution and whatnot, and then they can, you know, basically practice eugenics on us and get rid of all of the idiots. All right. Well, that answer is controversial, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Jesus, where did that come from? Uh, anyway, on that note, I guess I should tag people. I haven't got my comments up, which is how I normally tag people. So I'm going off the top of my noggin. I'm going to tag Mindy's book journey because I always throw tags her away. I feel sorry for her. I don't know how she finds the time to do them all. Uh, I'm going to tag Charles Heathcote. I will tag, let's do some smaller channels. Let's do, um, oh, let's do, let's do Joel Swagman. Let's do uh, Pythalo Gray from I Ain't Finna Read That. We're gonna tag attention with an exclamation mark at the end. We are gonna tag Marianne Moronsky. I will also tag, I'm gonna tag Cam at Page Nomad if he hasn't done this. And I guess that'll do for now. So there we have it, that is the tag. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my answers. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.